Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Uh, this is a question about mechanics, uh, statics, a question from one of the Solomon papers, Solomon L. It's question number three from that paper, and it also corresponds to question number eight from my end of topic worksheet on statics, which one of the students in my class has asked me to go through. So I'm going to go through this question now. It says, figure two shows a cable car of mass one ton. One ton in SI units is basically 1,000 kilograms. Okay, so one ton, one ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. You should know that conversion, which has broken down. The cable car is suspended in equilibrium. So another key word is equilibrium here. Okay, equilibrium is a key word here because it means all the forces acting on this object balance out. Okay, they're all in or balanced by two perpendicular cables again another keyword perpendicular AC and BC are perpendicular that right angles you can see from here that's going to help us a lot in this question to make life a bit easier for us uh, which are attached to fixed points A and B at the same horizontal level so another another important word that's horizontal on either side of a valley the cable AC is inclined at an angle of alpha to the horizontal where tan alpha equals three quarters. Again, another piece of information that's going to be very useful for us. So let me just look at this piece of information. They told us that the tan of the angle alpha is equal to three quarters. Now, of course, when we're dealing with a question like this, we're going to have to be resolving forces. So we're going to be using sine alpha and cosine alpha, basically. And if we know the exact value of tan alpha, what is not sensible for you to do is to go, go ahead and find what the actual angle alpha is because you're going to have to round it in most cases, like in this case, and then you're going to use that rounded angle and find the sine of it. It's going to give you a non-exact answer and the same for cosine. So what the best, most sensible thing to do is for you to do the following. For you to basically think about an angle, any right angle triangle who's the ratio of the opposite the opposite to the adjacent is three quarters okay in that case the opposite is three and the adjacent will be four and that means the hypotenuse if you think about this as a right angle triangle is going to be five a three four five triangle three squared plus four squared gives you 25 the square root of 25 is five so when we've done that we can then say okay that means the sine of the same angle alpha must be the opposite of a hypotenuse which is three-fifths and the cosine of this angle alpha must be adjacent over a hypotenuse which is four-fifths so we've got exact values for the sine and the cosine of alpha using that piece of information so that's how we're going to start then it says show that the tension in the cable ac is 5880 newtons and find the tension in the cable bc so so we can see what's happening when i'm showing my steps Okay, I'm going to um, do the following. So what I've done here already is I have shown the weight acting should be d directly down. Okay, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, just to make sure that you understand what's going on, I'll get rid of some of these lines first and show you to do it from scratch. So you've got the weight, which is acting vertically down. I'll, I'll do that with a solid line, sorry. So do like that. So the weight acting vertically down, which is 1,000 G Newtons, so 1,000 G Newtons. Then you've got the tension in the cable AC, which is what we have to find. I'll call that TA. And the tension in the cable BC, I'll call TB. All right, so now there are two ways of doing this question. The standard way of doing a question like this would be to resolve TA and TB horizontally and vertically, and then you'll have a pair of simultaneous equations and solve. But because we have an angle of 90 degrees here, there's something we can do that makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to resolve forces in the direction of TA and TB. Okay, so let's see how that works. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line across. Okay, and a vertical line coming down like this. And I'm going to use that to work out um, some of these angles here. And I'm also going to draw the, the, the force resolved in this direction. 
So I'm going to resolve 100 G Newtons in the direction of TV and in the direction of TA, parallel to DB and TA. Okay, so you know, so now I need to work out some of these angles so I can know how to resolve. So I know this is alpha, and we could say if this is alpha, then we could say that this is also alpha. Okay, this is also alpha. And if this is alpha, this is 90 minus alpha because that's horizontal, that's vertical. And, and we know that these two angles are also at right angles. These two, these two lines are at right angles. So I know that this must be alpha then, because that's 90 minus alpha, that must be alpha, because I have to add up to 90. So once I've figured out that this angle is alpha, I can say, okay, let me resolve this force, 1000 G Newtons, in the direction of TA. We've got to find what the tension in cable A is first, so I'm going to resolve it in this direction over here. If I resolve this force in this direction over here, it's going to be, you're going to be going away from the angle, so this is going to be 1000, G times sine alpha. And if I was going to resolve this force in the direction of or parallel to TB, you're going to go into the angle given, into the angle, which is 1000 G times cosine alpha. So this is 1000 G cosine alpha, resolved in this direction. That's the resolving of the forces, so I put them dotted. So we basically answered the question now. We can say, the tension in cable A is equal to 1000 G sine alpha. Ten the tension in cable B has no component in this direction. If I try to resolve TB in, in this direction, uh, sorry, sorry, 1000 G in this direction, okay, is, if I resolve 1000 G um, in, in the direction of T. B, that has no effect in, in this particular direction of TA. So 1000 G cosine alpha will have no effect on this when I'm resolving in this direction here because they're perpendicular. Forces that are perpendicular to each other uh, will not affect each other in that way. So TA equals 1000 G sine alpha, which is 1000 uh, times 9.8 times 3 fifths. I think it was 3 fifths, wasn't it? Yep. So we can then say that the tension in the cable AC is going to be, we can just work out what it is. You'll have 1,000 times 9.8 times 3 fifths, which is 5,880 5 newtons, which is exactly what we were asked to show. Okay, then we've got to find the tension in the cable BC where we've already got it all set up for ourselves. So the tension in the cable BC is going to be um, when you resolve this force, 1000G, in this direction. So you've got the tension in the cable BC, if we're resolving now in this direction here, is going to be equal to 1000G times cosine alpha, which is equal to 1000 times 9.8 now instead of multiplying by three fifths, we're going to multiply by four fifths. That's cosine alpha. So the tension in BC is equal to. So we can just take our answer and just change that three fifths to four fifths. And that gives us seven thousand eight hundred and forty newtons. Seven thousand eight hundred and forty newtons. Nice exact values. So there we have the tension in the cable BC and the tension in the cable AC, and we've answered the question. That's part A. Okay, and let me just show you what process you have to go through in order to answer this question in the other way, which I mentioned. If this angle was not a right angle, then we wouldn't have been able to do it in this way, because resolving these forces um, in directions that are perpendicular to each other causes them to not have any effect on each other. So TB, 1000 G. Like for example, if I try to resolve TA in the direction of TB, I'm going to have to do TA times cosine alpha, cosine 90. And that gives you zero. Okay, that gives you zero. Because you're going to go this way, it would be TA times cosine 90 would be zero. 
So if I try to resolve TB in this direction, it will be TB times cosine 90, which is also zero. So they don't have no effect on each other. So you can just you end up with just one equation when there's 90 degrees between the two angles. So it's always a very um, good thing if you can spot that. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you the traditional method at the bottom of this page, the way you would have to do it if that wasn't 90 degrees. And some people actually use that method when it is 90 degrees, which I, I wouldn't really advise, but some people do. So I'll just show you how to do it that way so you can see the difference. Okay, so this is 1000G. This was the tension in cable AC, the tension in cable BC. Okay, and what the traditional way of doing it is to resolve the forces oops, horizontally and vertically. Okay, so horizontally and vertically. So I'll just put these lines here so I can sort the angles out. So basically, we know that this angle here must be alpha because of this alternate angles. And we can use that to resolve TA horizontally and vertically. And if that's alpha, that's 90 minus alpha. This must also be alpha here. So we can then resolve TB horizontally and, and vertically. So now, if I resolve horizontally, I can say that TA times going away from the angle, which is sine alpha, plus TB going into the angle, cosine alpha, is equal to 1000G. That's acting down. So that's one equation. And resolving horizontally, I can say that TB times going away from the angle, sine alpha, is equal to TA going into the angle cosine alpha. So remember, sine alpha was 3 fifths and cosine alpha was 4 fifths. So we can substitute these values in. So let's take the first equation, sine alpha. So you have 3 fifths times TA plus and 4 fifths <clears throat> times TB is equal to 1000 G. And I can simplify this equation by multiplying by 5. So I have 3TA plus 4TB is equal to 5000G. So I'll call that equation 1. And then we have this equation here. So you have 3 fifths TB is equal to 4 fifths um, TA. And I can also multiply both sides of this equation by 5 in which case you get 3 times TB is equal to 4 times TA. Okay, so what we can do now is we can use some sort of substitution. So for example, if I say that TB is equal to 4 over 3 TA, because I want to find what um, I want to find what TA is, so I can replace a TB with 4 over 3 TA. So I have 3 TA plus 4 times 4 over 3 TA is equal to 5000G. So now I only have one unknown, so I can find what TA is by multiplying that out. So I got 3 times TA plus 16 over 3 times TA equals 5000G. So that's going to be 9 TA plus 6, that's 25 TA over 3 equals 5000G. So we're going to have TA is equal to 3 times 5000 G over 25. And hopefully that will give us, it looks like it will because it's exactly the same as what we had before, in a slightly different form. So 3 times 5000 times 9.8 divided by 25 and that gives us 5880. But you see the amount of work you have to go through to get the answer using this method is a lot more. What we did simply before, we, we just resolved perpendicular uh, in, in line with TA and in line with TB and we got the answers you know, straight away. Um, anyway, so to find what T, TB is, we can just use this now. So we know that TB is 4 thirds 
times 5880. So T in tension in the cable BC is going to be this times four thirds, which gives us 7840, which was our same answer as before. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that, okay, for two reasons. One, what would you, that's what you would have had to have done if this angle was not 90 degrees. Okay, you would have had to have done this method. Um, you'd have to use this method. Um, and also to show you the difference when it is 90 degrees of, of how simple it is by resolving in the direction of the forces rather than horizontally and vertically if the forces are perpendicular to each other. It's like one step and we're done. Okay, so that's seven marks and you get, you get those seven marks for just doing this. Okay, rather than going through all of this hassle over here and getting the same answer. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you that for. Now, question num part B is going to be, all right, it's a simple question. It says, explain the effect. A gust of wind blows down along the valley. Explain the effect that this will have on the tension of the two cables. So you've got the tension in A and the tension in B. And you've got the weight, which is 1,000 G newtons acting down. It should be vertically down, but anyway. Okay, now if you have a gust of wind also blowing, okay, just say the gust of wind is blowing along the valley. So these, this is like across the valley. So just imagine you're looking side, side on. You won't really see, you would see basically one line representing the two cables. You'd have this cable car and, you know, we're looking from the side view. If there's a gust of wind blowing, what's going to happen is it's like there's an extra force acting let's call it W, acting on this object, which will cause it to kind of like tend to go, want to go like this. It's kind of pulling it that way. So you can see that there's going to be your tension in the string and you're going to have the W. That's going to cause, there's an extra force now. You, you don't just have the, the weight, you have the, the force of the wind. So there's going to be more force acting on the cables. The, f the force acting on the cables will be greater. So the effect that the gust of wind will have blowing along the valley would be it would be to increase it will increase okay the the tension in, in the cables it will increase the tension in the two cables hope you understand that why in the two cables <clears throat> and there we have the answer to part B. Okay, and that was the end of the question. Pretty simple. Thank you for watching. Um, by the way, here you will find a playlist which will take you to the questions that are in the same Solomon L paper. Okay, all the other questions in the Solomon L paper. Over here you'll find a playlist which will take you to all the questions, a playlist with all the questions about statics in M1. And if you want to subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications of when my videos come out, you can then click on this icon over here and it will take you to, um, it will subscribe you to my channel. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.